Um, I'd like to introduce Stella Wisdom, digital curator at the British Library, and she's going to be talking about some of the other projects that we do in the library that sort of very much focus on um, creativity, uh, playfulness, and um, other kinds of experimentation. So over to Stella. Thanks, Mahendra. Glad I've not got the wrong end of the stick. Um, apologies. Some of you who might have seen me before, you might get some repeats, but I've also got some new slides in. Normally, I'd also show lots of videos, but I've only got 15 minutes, so this is going to be a fast whistle-stop tour. Um, so really, when Digital Scholarship was started in the library, I think one of the things that we didn't um, think back then, probably um, sort of 2010, 2011, is um, just how creatives and creative practitioners would use our collections. And that's what I found most fascinating and and most most enjoyable so I'm going to talk about some of these creative projects um, starting off with the National Video Game Arcade and we've got Ian Simons sitting at the back you want to wave Ian's waving. So I've, in fact, this is one of the longest standing partnerships I've worked with in the library. If anyone's heard of the Off the Map competition, um, th this is the competition that the British Library has run with um, Game City as it was, which is the festival, and National Video Game Arcade when they got their building, um, which is a permanent building. You can go and visit in Nottingham. It's awesome. Um, but we've been running this competition, and really it's been to explore how the library's collections um, can engage with new audiences and basically be used to make video games and interactive fiction and this has been a competition for higher education students um, so we started off in 2012 and um, this is to set the scene and we picked the theme of London and the Great Fire of London and we picked um, maps and views from our, from our maps collections and um, working with Tom Harper who's our curator of antiquarian maps picked views like this and here we've got a map from the Crace collection you can see in the cartouche um, London is on fire there um, and the winning team that year um, made an absolutely amazing explorable space and normally I'd show a video of this but in the essence of time sadly I'm not but if you're curious and go onto YouTube um, type this link in you don't have to scribble down the links I've put the slides up on SlideShare so if you find the British Library's digital research team on SlideShare um, then you can find these slides but an absolutely amazing explorable um, London at that time we ran the competition again we linked it with the Gothic exhibition if anyone in the room came to our Gothic exhibition which was amazing the winning team made um, a VR game um, called Nyx, um, where basically you recreate Font Hill Abbey. Font Hill Abbey doesn't exist anymore. Um, well, the, it, in fact, it only exists in a two-volume set of illustrations. We've got these engravings, but the building was so preposterous it fell down. Um, but this was a wonderful, wonderful game where you could actually rebuild it and then explore it. Um, We've had Alice's Adventures off the map, and um, two of these games actually got to go in the Alice in Wonderland exhibition. That was the first time we actually had playable games in a British Library exhibition, um, which was interesting for me, as I had to go and reboot them from time to time. But, the, but um, that was a learning experience. But the winning game was absolutely enchanting, and that was called The Wandering Lands of Alice. Um, and what was interesting about that is the digitised items formed part of the game um, world. So actually, you can, you can see here um, the pages of the manuscript um, it's actually in the game spines of books books labels ownership marks you name it it's quite delightful um, then we had Shakespeare off the map and a wonderful Tempest game won that. Um, there was also some other very interesting entries and we started receiving more interactive fiction entries and, and entries from students that weren't studying game design but other subjects at university so that's been interesting as well. Um, moving on so, so that was kind of my first kind of um, partnership, um, looking at kind of games and, and creative industries. But following on from that, um, I got funding from Creative Works London, which was an AHRC funded network, to have a writer in residence, but not just any writer in residence, an interactive fiction writer in residence. And this is Rob Sherman. Um, pictured holding a biscuit you might think why is he holding a biscuit that's a ship's biscuit um, and it's a ship's biscuit because he did a residence um, with an exhibition that we held called lines in the ice this was all about john franklin and lady franklin and basically john franklin went looking for the northwest passage and his ships got lost you might know about these the terror and the erebus um, they got lost in the ice um, so rob wrote a completely new narrative that went into the exhibition as well imagining that he was one of the expeditions looking for the missing John Franklin. And he created this character here, Isaac Skin Skinbank, um, who was actually looking for John Franklin. Um, that's a 
portrait that Rob drew, and that's the character's journal, which looks like it's a historic book from the collections, but actually it's not. And, and what I really kind of loved about this project is, so, so Rob was an interactive writer in residence, and he works, um, he's very competent with software, and he writes interactive fiction, but here he is working with British Library book binding conservators in our studios, actually making a book, um, and this was delightful. He made the journal for the character and, and kind of bound it and aged it, and that went into the exhibition and people could handle it. Um, he created a fictional boat, the Otranto, because we'd also got Gothic on at the same time, so we were having a few little in-jokes um, kind of between the two exhibitions. Um, he also created a Google map and put content that he was writing on the Google map, and we've been playing around with this kind of technology since then, but Rob was kind of the first person in the library doing that. In the, at the time. Um, people in here know what a pirate box is? People probably played around with pirate boxes more. Um, pirate box is a Raspberry Pi, um, and it's like a little web server that doesn't broadcast onto the open web. You can make like a little local network that you can make content available or people can leave content for you. Um, Rob made a pirate box and we put it into the exhibition um, and we did it as a digital cairn so so kind of in um, John Franklin's day you can see Rob's drawing of these piles of rocks um, explorers would leave messages in copper canisters in these little towers of rocks and rubble um, and the raspberry pi that was in the lines lines in the ice exhibition was our digital equivalent so Rob could leave content and messages for people in the exhibition and people could then leave him things in return so this was quite fun um and he also wrote music, so, and we had performances. So, so this was a real, real eye-opening for me. I thought Rob was going to be um, sitting in a room writing twine games, and what he was actually doing was baking ship's biscuits, um, writing songs, making pirate boxes, and all manner of things. But it really kind of made me aware of kind of what, what I now know is transmedia, so people storytelling, but storytelling using kind of um, mixed forms of technologies, and, and not always digital, it can be analogue as well. Um, so if you're interested in Rob's song, they're up on the library's SoundCloud account and they really are quite fun. Um, he actually made an instrument for one of them as well, so super talented. Um, following from that, in fact, you've probably bumped into Sarah who's selling her badges in the foyer. We had a second creative entrepreneur in residence. Um, after successfully getting funding to pay for Rob's residency, I got funding to pay for Sarah's residency and she made um, a poetry, a geolocation poetry app. Um, so this was, I'd looked at other apps, so this is not so much a kind of poetry tour this is more you can have it running on your phone and as long as you've got gps switched on and the app um, it will ping up if there's a poem about written either written in or about a place um, we we just managed to do some sample content for london but this is running so if you've not checked out poet poetic places yet you might want to um, and this is what the interface look like looks like this is three screenshots um, sarah used the images from the Flickr collection so again um, showing creatively these Flickr images have been reused and reused but that's been been absolutely brilliant um but following on, a bit like Rob making biscuits and pirate boxes and everything else, Sarah is a creative soul, um, and, and since then she's been running Bagical Kingdom. So, so using kind of libraries and museums and galleries, open content to make jewellery. Um, so if you've not checked out her stall, this plug for Sarah, in the coffee break, check out Bagical Kingdom. They're a bargain, they're £6 each, and Christmas is not too far away, if I can say that. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, in fact, and here's one of a British Library item. So... Um, someone in the audience mentioned earlier about newspapers being a slow form of internet and I'm like, oh, what about cat pictures? Uh, but there is actually lots of cat pictures in our collections and Sarah's used one of them for a Badgical Kingdom badge. Um, since then, done lots of other collaborations. Um, people here might not know what Wordplay is, um, but if you're in Canada, you might. Um, so Wordplay is a free interactive fiction festival that they ha hold in Toronto Reference Library, and this has been going for a number of years. Um, but last year, we had the first Wordplay festival outside of Canada, and we had it in London. We had a showcase of 25 interactive fiction games in the main building. People could come and play them, and many of the writers um, came along to demo their games. That was really cool, and we held that as part of International Games Day at your library. So each year for the last couple of years, I've been running games events, but I was super pleased to be working with Wordplay on that. Um, sadly, they're not coming back to London this year. Um, they can't um, afford to travel over here every year, um, but there is a Wordplay event in Toronto. So if you are based in Toronto, or if people on Twitter are based in, Tor in Toronto, please do go and check out Wordplay. Um, 
someone who is in the audience though is Gary Green. Um, do I get a wave? Little wave? Tiny wave. <laughs> Gary's over there. Um, so Gary works in um, Surrey Public Libraries. Um, so there's actually lots of people. I don't want people thinking I'm the only person in libraries doing these games projects. Um, since starting my journey on this, I've been bumping into a whole number of people. Um, and Odyssey Jam was a great online games jam using the Flickr images once again. And people had to make um, games linked with the Odyssey story. Um, and it was linked in with an, an initiative called Read, Watch, Play, um, which is basically like an online book group but it's an online kind of um, book group getting people watching and playing as well so not just thinking of reading books but really kind of thinking in a very multimedia way um, there is going to be another read watch play um, game jam next year that uh, Gary's planning at the moment I probably can't tell people what it is yet can I yeah um, so it's going to be gothic novels um, game jam so so it, next year's the anniversary of the publication of Frankenstein um, so do watch read watch play and if you want to make a twine game or anything like that then that will be super cool and it's in July yes. in July July 2018 um, Linking in with this and again showcasing a bit like with International um, Games Day at your library, um, the London Games Festival got rebooted the other year. Um, so we had a super cool event here at the library. They had a fringe programme. So there's quite a lot of serious events for the games industry, but there was also a really good fringe programme. Um, I somehow wangled myself onto the kind of planning committee for the fringe and we had a really good one day event here in the conference centre and um, looking at literature and games. So, so games that have been in inspired by literature, but also books that have originated and they started off as a game. So, so we were looking at both sides of the coin here, and you might, um, th there are examples of this, you'd be surprised. I mean, if you go into Forbidden Planet and look in the book section, there are actually a growing number of books um, basically following on from the narratives from games. So, so that's actually quite interesting. Um, Leading on from this, I've worked with the learning team here in the library um, and, and with the adult learning manager. We held a writing school um, this summer. Um, this was a five-day summer school where people got to write a twine story. Um, we called it the Infinite Library because um, we do feel like the Infinite Library here. Um, and this was a big success, actually. I was kind of a little bit sceptical, thinking, are people going to want to sign up for a week-long course to write interactive fiction? But they did. It sold out a month before it took place and yeah really interesting so we'll be running that again um, planning that at the moment and what's really interesting so Rob Sherman who was writer in residence is going to be the convener for the summer writing school next summer so it's actually quite nice that someone that I've partnered with on a previous project um, I'm working with again on a new project um, I've worked with the Institute of Education that's now part of University College London. Um, we did a project called Playing Beowulf. Um, so they've got some software in the Institute of Education called Mission Maker. Um, Mission Maker's great. It, it, it's, you can use it in the classroom with school children and children can make their own games. Um, so we did um, a really cool one themed around Beowulf and we had some workshops happen here in the library where children made Beowulf games. And in fact, we took it to Game City Festival, not last year, the year before, and we had children making Beowulf games up at the Game City Festival as well. So super cool. Um, leading from that, I've probably only got three minutes, I'll race through this. Lakescraft, so Lakescraft is a new one. Um, and in fact, if you come to the library on Saturday, um, I've got two people from Lakescraft who's gonna be demoing some Lakescraft games. This is a project led by Lancaster University um, and they use the popular Minecraft platform um, to work with children and young people to make um, literary stories and literary environments in Minecraft. So they've done um, Swallows and Amazons. Um, what they've been working on at the moment is Treasure Island. Um, so and so this is just some screen grabs um, from this but that's actually then led on to a bigger grant um, so there's a project with the lofty title of chronotopic mapping of literature um, that's actually starting this month so I've not got too much to share about that at the moment but that's um, again linked in with um, Sally Bushell and James Butler from the Lakescraft project at Lancaster and that's going to be very exciting um, looking at lit literature um, and, and kind of how we can visualize 
visualise literature in new ways using um, virtual reality and gaming technology. So if, if you do find yourself in the library on Saturday and want to see some lakes craft games, then do pop in. Um, you might get roped into doing a Treasure Island activity if you're not too careful. Um, so that's part of International Games Week. Um, obviously, globally, demand for this started off as International um, Games in Libraries Day. It's now International Games in Libraries Week. So that's actually this week at the moment. There's activities happening all over the place, so do check with your local public library. Um, they, there's, I'm sure there's something happening. There's a website for that. Our event here is on Saturday, 10 till 4. We're also having a pop-up games parlour, so I occasionally um, get... I've, in fact, I've got a growing collection of board games. And another thing, I've not put a slide on this, I've been surprised by the amount of people making analogue board games and card games using libraries' collections to make this. So um, there's a really cool game about inventions called Great Scott. Um, it's a card game. Um, so, so sometimes I discover these by accident. I'm, I'm kind of out in a shop and find these... And and I'm like, oh, that's used British Library images or British Library collections. It's all really quite interesting. But I don't want to be the only one. I mentioned this. Um, people here know about Library Camp? Any librarians been to a Library Camp? Um, Library Camp is basically an unconference for librarians. Um, we decided to have a game library camp this summer in August where we invited people working in libraries or who like partnering with libraries um, to come in and talk about their projects and brainstorm some ideas. Um, so that was a big success. I learned about all sorts of things. Um, what I was most fascinated with reference librarians doing an escape the room type game to teach citation. So that's pretty cool. That's kind of cooler than some of the stuff I'm doing. So lots of interesting stuff going on. And there's a great blog post by um, um, Kate Lomax from Artifacto. So if you're interested in what happened at, at Game Library Camp, um, I'm hoping that we'll possibly have another one. But that was really cool. Um, also, following on from Game Library Camp, the library has got a network working with um, public libraries in the UK called Living Knowledge Network. They have skill sharing days. So I'm going, myself and Gary Green, who did Odyssey Jam, we're going up to um, Leeds on the 9th of November um, to do a digital skills sharing day, talking about games and play. And again, um, so I mentioned Ian Simons of National Video Game Arcade. He's been working with Nottingham Public Libraries on a project called Story Smash. So he's sending one of his guys, Callum, to talk about Story Smash. So really, the aim is to kind of inspire um, people working in other libraries and other institutions to do their own game-type projects. And that's me. Have I overran a little bit? A little smidge? Bit. Thanks. <laughs>